Okay, ready? Four. brainer they were wrong uh, but let's talk about profiling and racism I'm, and I'm not here to determine whether profiling or racism occurred that night I'm here to say that it is a reality um, and it's what justifies filming and documenting this all could have been squashed if someone merely said the words my bad or sorry but instead it gets escalated by take measures and intimidation and then airborne by the unreal press conference. They are constantly asking citizens to get involved. But if the police are involved, it's changed to mind your own business. Don't question the police. I've had questions from my God from time to time. So who do they think they are? I really think we should have a safe, public forum on these issues with the mayor, the chief, and the guy that's the head of their union, because he's really out of the loop. Yeah. I also support a civilian review board with subpoena power and anything else that will help bring this community together, because that's what I'm about, man. I got a couple little kids, man, and I need it to be yeah, safe yeah, for them. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Emily Good. My name is Kaylin Rich, and I'm the chapter director of the Genesee Valley chapter of the New York Civil Liberties Union, the state affiliate of the American Civil Liberties Union. And I'm standing with these people today to ensure that all people are afforded the rights guaranteed to them by the U.S. Constitution, especially in this case, the First Amendment. In our society, people have a clear right to use video cameras in public places without being harassed or arrested by police. This right is especially important when it comes to documenting police interactions with community members. True justice has nothing to fear from citizen oversight. True justice embraces transparency. Following the recent unlawful arrest of Emily Good, the New York Civil Liberties Union has repeatedly called on the Rochester Police Department to ensure that its officers understand and respect people's constitutional right to videotape in public places, including the right to film police in public. In the wake of 
of the dismissal of the charges against Ms. Good on the basis that the charges lacked merit. This call to action is even more urgent. Emily Good was arrested for doing nothing more than being an advocate for true transparency and fair justice. The police department must do the same and must educate its officers to respect people's constitutional rights. Instead of defending unconstitutional arrests, the police department should build trusting relationships with our community by making necessary reforms to our civilian review board so the community can hold the police accountable for their actions. The New York Civil Liberties Union stands with Emily Good and applauds her dedication to upholding civil liberties in our community. Now it's time for the Rochester Police Department to take tangible and meaningful steps to improve police community relations and ensure residents are afforded all the rights of the Constitution. Thank you. I never said anything to Officer Masick before I started taping. So when Union President Mazio said that I, you know, he quoted me saying, these are my friends, that is completely false. And I'm really disturbed at his stand that it is irresponsible to question the police. I think that questioning authority is necessary and responsible and it is our duty. And I am I am terribly disturbed at, at his at his allegations that, that I was in the wrong and that my arrest was on was was legal. Have you contacted him, maybe have a sit down meeting to kind of see where he's coming from and he can see where you're coming from? No, I, I welcome maybe a, a public dialogue. I, I have not um, had any contact with him. Emily, some people would say you have an agenda. What, what's your response to that? I have a, an agenda of justice. I mean, my, my lifelong mission is to bring whatever justice I can to the world. And if this, uh, you know, th this opportunity of this case, which which I did not seek in any way, and I was I was very I was troubled and and hurt, and and you know, I, this is has been incredibly trying. But uh, you know, if this if this gives me an opportunity to push uh, for a community dialogue that, that may help bring some level of justice, some accountability to this community, then that's that's wonderful, and I'm I'm definitely um, going to act you know in, in in a way that will will further that and try to make that happen. But I, I didn't um, I've I've never I, I've I've never pursued you know this particular role <laughs> like a spokesperson or you know activist for. Uh, police accountability before, so this has come to me, and I'm, I'm happy to do it. Emily, has this been filed yet? Um, no, what we're working you, on this. What do you hope to gain out of this lawsuit against the RPD? I, uh, I hope that there is a precedent that is then a legal legal record that this kind of um, arrest was definitely what, an over. What's your arrest? My arrest was obstructing governmental administration, and uh, I, I hope that that charge is used less hug in the future. I did not. No? I did not. I did, in no way interfered. I was never very close to him at all. I was standing silently in my yard. And I think that the charge that they gave me is used too often. Oh, yeah, it is. And, um, you know, I, I hope that it, it it's part of it's part of uh, you know a, a legal trend to move away from using that charge. Is there, are there any African Americans you could speak to us uh, personally about yeah, racial profiling? In I'd love to. But it's okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, racial profiling is, is nothing new in this community, and it's not unique to this community. It's a historic problem that has existed in the United States of America for as long as there have been police problems. It's well documented, tons of research on it. And so this is not new, this is just the latest incident. We know that people like the late Reverend Raymond Graves and Minister Franklin Florence and others have been fighting against these issues since the 1960s. Something the community needs to be aware of is that Mr. Masio or Maceo, I'm not sure about the correct pronunciation, Masio, that he's out of control. This guy apparently has forgotten who he is. He's our employee. He's our civil servant. At least that's who he's supposed to be. But obviously the guy is drunk. He's drunk with power. Now some of us thought that the uh, former 
ahead of the police union, Ron Evangelista. We thought that he was bad. But this guy makes Evangelista look like a good cop, if there's such a thing, because that's a contradiction of, in terms. We know that uh, some police officers strive to be decent human beings, but they're part of a rotten system. And that's the whole point. We know, not because I say so, because the history bears it out, that we cannot depend on the police to police the police. That's why we must police the police, the, the citizens. Let me, let me finish this point, and then I'll answer any question that you have. So, this goes to the heart of the matter. We must have independent civilian review with subpoena and investigative power of the police in order to bring about accountability, and we're going to fight for that. Is there any response about them saying this is not racial profiling, it's criminal profiling? That's what the police chief has Yes, there's a response. The response is that it's just it's not true. It is racial profiling, clearly. Emily would tell you, she can speak better than any of us, why she grabbed her camera in the first place. But they, they, have, they have told us repeatedly that these individuals were known to them to be violent, and that's why they That's what they them. say. We say produce the evidence. We say produce the evidence. We've heard a lot of different things about this individual and so forth. By the way, we're looking for the young man. We would like to have a discussion with him as well. And, and by the way, it was one individual. So because some of the reports, some of your own reports, have uh, uh, said that there, were, there was more than one person. It was one person. And obviously, after handcuffing the guy, searching his car, searching his person, they turned him loose. So what, we don't even know if they had reasonable cause to stop him in the first place. No matter what list he might be on, if he wasn't uh, suspected of some wrongdoing at the time or, or previously, then he shouldn't have been stopped in the first place. No one has spoken to that. Why was he stopped in the from Profile. the beginning? Why were you handcuffed? Profiling. Can I say something about the profiling? So, so just on the issue of, of profiling, even criminal profiling, I think we should all question that. Profiling based on one's past criminal record, one's sexuality, one's gender. Profiling is illegal. Just because someone might even have a past criminal record doesn't mean every time you leave the house you can be stopped. You can be, you can be pulled over, you can be stopped, you can be taken out of your car, you can be handcuffed, you can be searched, you can be put in a police car, you can have your car searched. That's why we have the Fourth Amendment, reasonable search and seizure. So I think we should all question Chief Shepard's legality of the profile, which has been, whether it's criminal, racial, gender, or any type of profiling, people need to have evidence of reasonable cause to pass someone over. Just because someone has a past criminal record, just because someone might have a misdemeanor charge from 10 years ago, you cannot push, pull someone over and interrogate them. So even criminal profiling, I think we should all be questioning, because that's that's what's different is about this country. We have the Constitution, we have these rights that are inalienable, which we just, many of us just celebrated just yesterday. Emily, is there anything else that you want to add where things stand with the lawsuit? Um, we're going to file uh, the lawsuit in uh, the next couple weeks. Who's helping you do this? Uh, Don Thompson is my lawyer for this part of it. And then if you win and there's some financial settlement, does that come out of taxpayer dollars? Um, I, I think it, it I, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I think so. I think part of it depends. I don't expect a large financial settlement, and I'm definitely not in this to get a financial settlement. I would consider donating whatever financial award that I receive to a group that is working on these issues after maybe, I mean, I have um, suffered a, a few a few like financial losses through this, um, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm definitely not in this to, uh, you know, get thousands of dollars of taxpayer money. I'm, I'm very interested in reinvesting that in the community in a positive way. And um, when, when we when question like the money and taxpayer dollars, I just want to redirect that back to um, the incident of the police coming to the meeting of my supporters in four patrol cars and using rulers to ticket people for parking what, violations. What exactly happened here, let me ask? We were having a meeting at the community space where um, I do a lot of volunteer work and um, a number of police officers came um, in full uniform and issued tickets to people who were parked 12 and a half to 13, 14 inches from the curb 
Um, so that that seems like a real serious what your, waste. What was your um, waste of taxpayer dollars right there? What was your whole meeting about? Uh, your how to deal with with um, the exploding interest in my case and and how to uh, sort of support me and then uh -huh. use the um, the the spotlight to redirect energy to racial profiling and right. and police accountability. Keep on keeping on, keep on keeping on.